Well, there's been f all to do in Star Citizen lately. Overdrive is overhyped. Space piracy is as dead as a space donkey. And I'm starting to go clinically insane because the last epic space adventure I embarked on, worthy of being turned into an S to avoid evid, was over a month ago. But now we're on the cusp of Star Citizen 3.23 releasing to a public Wave 1 PTU audience, which could be mere days. So while we wait for the end of times to come to an end, it's time for another discussion video. Calm the f down, handsome viewers. The second 3.23 hits wave one, we'll return to our regularly scheduled epic space adventure content. But until then, let's talk about the truth of space piracy in our ludicrous space game. The truth is important because lies are bad. Because every space pirate who's ever quantum interdicted, boarded, murdered, and procured the goods from a vulnerable and unsuspecting cargo ship in our ludicrous space game tells themselves the same lie. And that lie is that piracy is a challenge. Piracy in Star Citizen is like taking space candy from a baby. Drop kicking the baby into the ocean, then hijacking their stroller as you escape at 94% of the speed of light, flipping off their mom while giving yourself a nice pat on the back as you celebrate yet another successful hit. Now obviously this is not true 100% of the time, but it's at least true 99% or at least like you know, most of the time. The problem doesn't lie in the pieces of the piracy gameplay loop puzzle that we have at our disposal. Even though the pieces of the piracy gameplay loop that we do have at our disposal are as fleshed out as the dead space donkey from before that's been violently decompressed in the vacuum of space. The problem lies with the specimen you see before you. Behold the space bob. Hello. The space bob runs around the solar system trading millions of credits of valuable cargo and doesn't even wear a set of armor worth less than 0.01% of what he's hauling around, never mind a weapon. Do you know how disappointing it is to board and murder a player in Star Citizen after waiting for two hours for a ship to show up on your radar and they don't even have anything worth looting except for the blood-stained white space pajamas and 3 million credits worth of RMC? If pirates are willing to spend so much time and effort stealing cargo, why aren't space bobs willing to put in a bit of time and effort defending their cargo? And this brings me to the point of this video. The sky. Well, not really, but you see, we've been told and speculated about a lot of upcoming features, both near and far, coming to the FPS side of gameplay for our ludicrous space game. From sniper glint to dynamic crosses, to pinging targets to highlight them through walls, and even the potential for scanned ships to indicate the locations of life forms. I believe these changes are going to be good for the game, good for the space bobs, good for the murder hobos, good for the pirates, and good for everyone in between. Hiding in the mountains, sniping players who have no clue they're about to be cloned and 3D meat printed is easy. Ambushing players from the shadows of Brios when they're at their most vulnerable doesn't exactly take much skill. Boarding a reclaimer filled with cargo defended by nothing but an underprepared unarmed sperm suit enjoyer is hardly ever a challenge. The force multiplier provided when you have a sneaky upper hand at Brio's or the quantum snare trap already laid in your mantis, provided this is even possible in 3.23, or the opportunity for surprise when sniping clueless conga liners that don't even exist anymore at Jumptown is kind of OP and trivializes the encounter. I'm a firm believer that games are at their best when they have a good mixture of fun and difficulty, but the challenge component obviously varies from person to person. Like how some people are challenged by simply getting into their new origin in junk work ships at Orison, and some people are challenged by camping outside of Grimhex in an F8C, or how I've been challenged severely in the past by trying to solo hijack a ship full of maize at Jumptown over and over again. However, for me, metaphorically curb stomping kittens with no situational awareness or tools at their disposal to fight off a ravenous group of pirates can be fun, I just wish it was consistently more challenging. And this is coming from someone who has spent so much time camping Brio's breaker yard, brutalizing unsuspecting cargo hoarders that it's no longer camping but more like occupying formal housing. Things like scanning ships to detect life forms like in Star Trek, Your precious little life form. Where are you? 
handheld motion sensors like an alien, pinging targets through walls like in Apex Legends, ability to follow tracks, see through walls, and yes, even sniper glint like in some Battlefield games are all additions we will or might actually see in Star Citizen that can potentially introduce more interesting, challenging gameplay in the form of counterplay based on the tools at your disposal. Having to choose stealth armor to make you strong in subterfuge but weak in armor rating or signal jammers that occupy a valuable armor slot to not be detected by ship scans sounds like a good trade-off system, if and when we even get systems like this in the first place. You can lead a space bob to water give him ludicrously cool science fiction gameplay features that literally let him see through walls, which also encourages some kind of actual interesting counter gameplay, but you cannot make him wear armor, carry a gun at all times, or drink the, the water. Every time we get more cool features that slowly turn Star Citizen one goddamn year at a time from actual fancy tech demo to actual fancy game that makes interactions between players in space, on the ground, and on ships more exciting and fun, and most importantly, more challenging, the better. Will they get it right the first time? We're really struggling. Probably not. Is it worth waiting for and experiencing for ourselves one day and then discussing how things could be balanced and figuring out what works and what doesn't? It's fun. It needs to be in there. You know, you need a challenge when shooting people. You need a challenge when tracking people. Am I going to continue metaphorically clubbing baby seals and stealing all their cargo until we get more meaningful gameplay decisions to make based on our loadouts, weapon choices and ship components? Yeah, sure. I mean, th th there's a lot of fun to be had in that regard and there's little I wouldn't do for a few credits, but I look forward to the day that the baby seal space bob kittens become more like adolescent polar bears filled with cargo or something, and when there's some interesting tools on either side's tool belt to use to keep the gameplay interesting, fresh and fun. Now I do realise that just adding some cool new features to the game isn't going to change how certain players play the game, and I'm not complaining that people play the game this way. You need to enjoy the game your way, that's part of Star Citizen's charm. But I also don't think that people should be able to complain about losing millions of credits to the PVPers, pirates or anything else when you leave your hangar wearing nothing but the equivalent of space underwear. However, and this is something everyone's favourite space tomato has mentioned in the past, the game currently does not do a great job of informing players of the potential for danger at a given location. A lot of this stuff is just learned by playing the game or knowledge shared between players. Yes, you can infer that Brio's breaker yard is a dangerous place by the fact that there's a terminal there that purchases crazy illegal space drugs, and therefore is probably not the safest neighbourhood on Daymar. But there's no true in-game way, especially for a newer player, to understand the nuances and purposes for a location like Jumptown versus a random platform on Crusader. I'm not saying the star map needs giant red zones for dangerous places and giant green zones for safer places or giant yellow zones for the neutral zone. But it would be cool if there was an in-game codex or some kind of indicator to give newer or more casual players an indication of what they're getting themselves into when they go to certain places. There's always going to be the PvP versus PvE debate in Star Citizen but ultimately anyone who's logged into the pledge store, purchased a game package and whether they spend $50 on a starter pack or $9 trillion on the Concierge Legatus Ultra 890 Fleet Admiral Mega Whale Pack, you should have at least realized that you're signing up for a PvPVE game and players enjoy pushing people's shit in and you'll get yours pushed in too just like I have. So at least have some dignity and get it pushed in wearing a cool set of armor instead of some white space pajamas. Until then, let's ride this 3.23 hype train out of the space station and into the fucking sun. Thank you channel Patreons and channel members for your support. Your incredible generosity continues to blow me away. Thinking of pledging to this ludicrous space game, then use one of the referral codes on screen now for a free 5,000 starting credits. If you enjoy my content and are interested in supporting the channel beyond a like and a subscribe, check the links in the description. Consider the join button below and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash voidude. Your continued support genuinely helps me to continue producing these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around the verse. Cheers. Terrifying dude, it's like something out of Alien.